Most of them are dead. Um, the rest of them are wandering this fair. It's really weird. I don't like it. But the way that this is going to look, we're going to utilize uh, three cups made all out of solid copper. Now, I like copper for a number of different reasons. First reason, it's nice and strong, nice and durable, nice and solid. Second reason, no matter where you are, even if you're walking by, ignoring the magic show going on, you can still see the copper cups in the distance. The other reason why I like copper is because it possesses a trait no other metal possesses, in which copper is actually considered to be penetrable. Very weird. Now, in order to do this properly, I'm also going to need a magic wand. And I actually have one right here. I appreciate the, uh, the assistance. And the last thing I'm going to need to keep right back here, it is going to be a little red ball. Now, some people might recognize this as something more known as the shell game. The shell game was a game that was played a very long time ago, and it's even still played today. The whole concept was that you would take a ball, place it under a cup, scramble it up, and if you could find the cup with the ball underneath it, you would win a prize. Later on, as the years progressed, though, it actually changed a little bit into something known as Fimble Ring, and that was played on horse tracks. Fimble Ring was actually less of a game, more of a con and a swindle, in which, uh, no matter who you played it with, uh, if you were the one playing, you'd be guaranteed to lose. And people that played this game were guaranteed to lose not just money, but some people even lost clothes and even their pockets. I'm not here to con anybody, or swindle, or hustle, or anything like that, at least today. Um, also worth noting, it really depends on who I'm playing against. So for example, if I was playing against you, sir, absolutely not. If I was playing against you, young lady, I absolutely would. Now, uh, we are going to need to break one major rule when it comes to this game, and that is using one ball for three cups. Instead, I'm actually going to use one ball for each of the cups. And that's going to look a little something like this. You start by taking the first ball, you quickly spin, that produces the second ball. So that's one, that's two. Ball number two is actually capable of doing a magic trick all on its own, but first you do have to turn it into a magic ball. So watch very closely. Now it's a magic ball. Here we go. On three. One, two, three. If you're still unimpressed, that's fine. I get it. But the last ball happens when you spin your wand up here. Sorry. Hang on. You spin the wand, you touch your hand, and it's right there. So, we have one, two, and three. So for those that might speak French, that's un, deux, trois. If you speak Spanish, it's uno, dos, tres. If you speak German, it's eins, zwei, drei. If you speak Roman, it's I, 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 I. It's very simple, you can't really make these things up. Also very important to note, uh, this magic wand isn't much of a magic wand, it is really more of just like a stick. Um, however, to make it a magic wand, I coated it in Teflon. So you can see, stick, not stick. It's okay, I have a spare. And now we're ready to begin. So the way this is gonna work is gonna be like this. You take each ball off the top of their cups, place it into your hand, give a little tap, a blow, make it vanish. We're gonna do the same thing with this ball right here, take it off the top of its cup, place it into our hand, give it a tap, a blow, make it vanish. Now the last ball is usually the most difficult ball to do. So watch very closely. There it is. A tap, a blow. Did you see it leave yet? It hasn't gone yet, that's why. You really need to pay close attention to these things. This is my finale for a reason. You give a tap, a blow, and the closer you watch, the easier it is to fool you. Okay. Don't clap for that. That was so cheap. Alright, so here's the thing. Yeah. If you give a tap on the cups, one, two, and three, you're actually going to see now that there is a ball under this cup, a ball under this cup, and a ball under this cup. So now there's going to be three cups, three balls, and we're ready to begin. So the way this is going to look is a little bit differently now. We're going to try to switch it up. This time we're going to place one ball underneath each of these cups. So we're going to place this one right here this one right here, and this last ball right here. Um, actually, gentlemen right there. Hi, what's your name, boss? Joe. Joe. All right, Joe, from where you are, Joe, A, B, C. Joe, choose a cup. All right, Joe, listen and try again. A, B, C. Choose A cup for me, Joe. Yeah, you see how easy this is? I'm kidding. You chose C, that was your choice? Alright, I'm going to push that cup forward with the magic wand. I am not going to touch it with my hands. 
I am then going to take a ball out from cup B for myself invisibly. So for those of you that may have never seen a miniature invisible red crochet ball before, I have one right here. I might have dropped one too, so if anyone sees it, let me know. I miss it. Um, now I'm going to take this ball and I'm going to simulate dropping it into your cup. So it should look as though it leaves mine and it goes over to the one that you picked. Now you see, Joe, sometimes people wonder what would have happened if they chose the other direction. Well, good news, I can go both ways. <laughs> Grow up. All right, here we go. We take each ball just like we did before. One here, one here. You take the ball out and you simply just drop it into the cup. That's all it takes. It'll still leave this one going over to the one that you pick every single time. That's just how this works. Now, what we can do too is we take it a step further by placing two underneath and the last ball on top. Take the cups, you simply stack them on top of one another, run your wand right down the side, and it should cause the ball to actually melt down, joining its friends underneath. So you have one, two, and three. But I do understand that some people can be a little skeptical because there could be some people that think there's a huge, gigantic, gaping hole in the bottom one of my cups. <laughs> now, what we can do here is we can actually take this one final step further in which we actually take each ball like we did at the beginning, but instead of making it vanish, we just put the ball away. We'll do the same thing over here with this ball right here. We're gonna put this one away, and we're even gonna put the last ball away too. Now remember, every single time I tap the cups, the ball's going to come back. So Joe, if I leave one ball under the center cup, how many balls are under the center cup? Right, except there's three. That's okay, I missed that my first time too. So that's one, that's two, that's three. And remember, you can tap on each of the cups, and they're always going to come back except this one got bigger. It's a little weird. Um, which probably means this one got bigger too. And uh, if you're paying attention, then uh, yeah, that one also got bigger. But here's the thing, by now people usually wonder if I'm using an extra ball. And the truth is, I am, except my extra ball is going to look a little bit like a lime. <laughs> which also means that this one's going to look like an orange, and uh, this one is a lemon. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah.